I'm just really excited for like Wednesday, Wednesday to Friday. That guys, that's so cool (laughs) is that we have the expansion, all these side deals. And then it's like, Hey guess guess what guys? It's the draft. (laughs) Like literally 48 hours after it's like, yeah, we're just, we're going to be here. All of those picks that uh, the Canucks are going to trade away. They're going to, you're going to watch other teams make those picks so quickly after talking about picks, Ryan. Oh, Talking about picks. Did what happened about picks? to one of our picks? Mm-hmm. The third? The third round pick going over to the Dallas Stars for current RFA Jason Dickinson. Um, the Jason next Dickinson. coming of Manny Malholtra. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it was great to see. It was great to see a player uh, with the attributes, uh, you know, a, a very suitable replacement for Brandon Sutter. Maybe mm-hmm. not as dominant in the faceoff dot, but a... I would say a bit of a, a, a specialist. He, uh, a penalty killer, a shot suppressor, mm-hmm. a uh, goals against uh, or a uh, goal opportunity suppressor. And he yeah. hasn't been paid his giant contract yet. He does. Uh, okay. This is, this is where I'm with this trade. I'm, I'm a little flustered. Really? In a good way or like enough kind of like, It's not a deal that I'm upset with. I get why they made it. It's Mm -hmm. good. Right. Mm -hmm. But if they, so this is the thing, sir. They traded (laughs) a third. A third is a little lottery pick. In the grand scheme of things, majority of the time, that third is Mm -hmm. not going to turn into a player that currently is in the form of Jason Dickinson, who, again, middle six forward. Sometimes they turn into Braden Point. Yeah. Okay. Um, (laughs) You know, so, uh, uh, great defensively, has um, fantastic analytics, sp- plays incredibly tough minutes. Um, jack of all trades, played in the top six in Dallas. I get that. The problem is with trades like this is that Jason Dickinson as a play driving player for this team is not going to move the needle to where they're like one of the other big kind of caveat of what this team needs Mm -hmm. in terms of the third line and center position where they need someone that not only plays exactly as, as Jason Dickinson's analytics say he plays, but they need someone that actually on the offensive side of it has a higher ceiling has, has just a little bit of a kick up. So now like you brought up the the contract, Ryan, are they really going to like, he's being paid what 1.7, yeah, the, I last can see year in Dallas. Yeah, that's right. So now they're gonna like now they're gonna go and they're gonna say, yeah, we're gonna give him two two point eight times three for a twenty six year old who's what career high in points is twenty two points. Mm. And the, you're gonna listen, and you're gonna say, I'm agreeing with you. And then you're gonna say that that player is now gonna be you're paying him third line center money mm-hmm. you're going to put him on that third line center position and now he's locked in that position unless he goes to the wing and you want to move jt miller down to the third whatever mm-hmm. okay i i i'm not insulted by this deal i'm not angry do i like do i do i wish they were on slightly better terms with jared mccann <laughs> Yes. Even though, <laughs> even though, you know, Toronto, that's, that's a great deal that Toronto made because Seattle was looking at Alexander Kerfoot. So mm-hmm. what Toronto essentially did was they traded Phil Hollander and that seventh to Pittsburgh mm-hmm. took on Jared McCann. And now v- Seattle has to choose. It's like, right. okay, well you take Kerfoot McCann's going to replace him. Okay. You take McCann. We keep Kerfoot. Mm-hmm. Every, yeah. And all it cost us was Hollander and a seventh. Right. Right. D- yeah so do i wish they were on better terms with jeremy can so you can go out and get someone who their ceiling's a little bit higher maybe not as a great as a defensive forward as jason dickens yeah but we'll see hey let's go into the season maybe maybe a bit uh, you know he's given a bit more offensive responsibility knowing this team knowing, knowing this injuries, team they're gonna expect everything. 15 to 20 goals out of him within like the first five games of the regular season i would love yeah I just I want a third line center that can give you give me 40 points. Then he deserves his 2.8 million over the course of the next three years. <laughs> uh, just like okay. All right. I mean, what's the what's your alternatives? 
Alternative Zach McEwen, Jay Beagle no. playing a third line. No, role. no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, okay, so your asset, your at your asset cost, <laughs> it's going up position cost yes. was a third. Listen, it was it was a third. Knowing how valuable both A cap space is and B draft picks are right now, and seeing how the landscape is going to shift after this. And not only that, but again, like they had to protect made their protect protective lists. Um, am I stoked like they didn't throw a third to Minnesota for Nick Bukestad? Yeah, that's great. Oh my god, <laughs> thank god they didn't do that. So this this move, um I think in the long run it'll pay off well. I hope they can get him into I, I'm just a little wary on giving a player like that that much money who's like yeah. a, very much a defensive specialist, unless he does turn out to be the second coming of Manny Mel Holtra. You know, he is a late first round pick late first round picks or first round picks in general they have that offensive ceiling and junior or whatnot and the where... fans and the fans just like manny they love him already he's already said the right things yeah. he already said he was a fan of the 2011 canucks and was cheering yeah. for them 100 percent. and we didn't up... even like the 2011 canucks it was too tra- it was too stressful to cheer for them yeah <laughs> and honestly sorry to ramble a little bit but i mean even when you look at like character stuff mm-hmm so him and Bo Horvat are linked. They're friends. They have the same agent. But you mm-hmm. look at the um, the social justice stuff in in the bubble with Black Lives Matter. Jason mm-hmm. Dickinson was was there beside Ryan Reeves and Pierre mm-hmm. Edward Belmar and Bo Horvat at the front. They, they at were right. front, leading the charge. At the at the front leading the charge. They uh, between the Ve- uh, Vegas and Dallas Stars game. They uh, him and Tyler Sagan with Ryan Reeves. They and Robin Lehner. They they took a knee during the national. Was he Athens. one of them? He was one of them. Yeah, he was one of them. So that's that's Sold great. already. And, yeah, that's that's great. the and kind of character this team is getting now. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, uh, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, a third. I'm not going to yell about it. Great. I think he's going to play really well. And if he's not going to give you offense, he's going to be able to do stuff for you that the team didn't have the year before. I'm just a little wary about like people I've been he- seeing and hearing people throwing out like. Oh yeah, or we've adjusted his contract, and we believe he's going to get two point eight after three. It's like, no, well, that changes okay. a lot. That changes the whole thing. If if Jason mm-hmm. Dickinson can if this season can bump up that offensive total a little bit, like to mm-hmm. thirty five, like thirty, if he can break thirty to thirty five mm-hmm. points, love it. <clears throat> Here's Great. my gripe with this. That's it's my that, only. That's yeah. my issue. My my gripe is that we do a lot. There's a lot of Groundhog Day on this show and and in this market where we've just spent the last four or five years being like, I cannot wait for the bottom six to not feature Brandon Sutter and these cast of underperforming people as much. It's like, and the other, the other argument, the other thing that we, we complain about and rightfully so is Jim Benning trades away all the draft picks. Right. And it's like, well, what, 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 what is worse? Is he's, he's trading a third or is that we're finally getting some, you know, some turnover they, in the bottom six. There's, there's been tur- so I was looking at their like protected list from the Vegas draft. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was so. <laughs> dis- who can I ask? Who is Tom Nilsson? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm being honest. I I love hockey. I'm Ryan and Gita. At this point, you know, like I'm a steel <laughs> trap for random information. No idea. I don't have a fathom of a like- thought. Like I would be embarrassed if that was the team today, except I feel like three years from now, we might be embarrassed. (laughs) Like just continue to be embarrassed by what they did protect and didn't and what they, what their roster actually is come like October. At least they didn't protect Erica Branson. At least our list didn't have like protecting Erica Branson and Marcus Granlin and stuff. Um, (laughs) But also, sorry, to go back to the pick thing, mm-hmm. you know, I, Ryan, I was, I was the same way where I was like, ah, uh, you know, they traded a third or whatever. They still have seven picks in this, this draft. Yeah. And I, did. And, and I think if the, given the benefit of the doubt of like them understanding a, this is one of the weirdest draft mm-hmm. drafts in NHL history um, to they've you know thomas gradines went to sweden and he has a couple like fourth or fifth round beauties in yeah. his back pocket so mm-hmm. maybe they're like yeah a third eh, we can move it for jason dickinson get some help right now someone that's 26 fits our age model right and we still have seven picks in the draft so it's not like we're yeah it's, we, we're coming no. in with like three 
There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with what happened as we all refreshed our phones on Saturday oh, yeah. morning, me on a lovely walk to a lake on Bowen Island. And then I got the look and I said, I'm not going to refresh my phone for a little bit. And I'm going <laughs> to admire this beautiful lake. Amanda, I have to go to the bathroom. You just went to the bathroom. Mm. Yes, I have IBS, Amanda. Not <laughs> me. And, then, <laughs> and then you hear me in the bushes. Wow, look at this breakdown on JFresh. Oh, what my a home God. Run. That's it. I'm subscribing to JFresh on my phone right now. I'm doing it. Uh, you talked about uh, going to Thomas Gradine, going to Sweden and finding a couple of beauties. I don't know about you, mm-hmm. but I had to dab my forehead with my handkerchief like a southern Texan oil bear and looking at a jacked oh. and toned Elias Pettersson uh, living his best life on a boat in, I don't know what country he's in. I it think is. Greece. he's in Greece. It's he's in Greece. Beautiful. Like, he look, like I'm, I'm vicariously living through his... Uh, vacation right now he's riding around in polaris spiders he's on mopeds he's wearing la lakers jerseys he's barely wearing clothes he's in great shape he's shooting the puck again <laughs> it's great to see he's having a great summer he looks great yeah he looks great i'm just gonna say it he looks great we only have love uh for elias Peterson on this podcast he was shooting the puck so his wrist injury seems to be kind of on the up and up there's um, nothing but positives. Just yeah. hey, maybe give him some money. Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> hey, when guys, does he remember, owed his money? Remember like this summer? Yeah, uh, remember six he's... months ago? Remember yeah. six months ago when I was like, hey, guys, remember this whole offer sheet thing? And y'all yelled at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Do they have to give, give him his money like in the next week? Um, I think this week or next. I don't know the official dates. Free agency is yeah. If I looked yeah. like that, I'd be in Greece waiting for my money too. <laughs> <laughs> Figure this out. I'm going to the most beautiful place in the world. I've uh, had a long year. I'm ready to strut that ass, looking good. <laughs> PD is looking good. Uh, I did get. I did put that in the rundown that he's looking real good and he's in great shape. And I put in the rundown. And I post our notes on Patreon. And a uh, somebody, a, a Patreon backer of ours, contacted me and said, uh, "What's he, is there photos of him? What's he looking like?" And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> there are, there are." Uh, also, go follow us on TikTok. Uh, some Gen Z uh, millennial piece of trash has pucks on net. So on another <laughs> social media platform, we are pucks on net. Ca. How did someone get there? You were around, but pucks on net has been around before TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, thanks, I gotta Ryan. Try to you had one job to do. A rash. Let's wear let's... Motley Crue shirts. Going to Bowen Damn, Island. You're really dating us. So your podcast from 1992. <laughs> it's actually hit. a radio show. <laughs> uh, a rash. This one hits close to home for you. Oh yeah. Are we trying to talk about it? Yeah. Let's do it. Ryan Ellis is now okay. Now I would like to start with this. Yeah. Um, a little plug for our Patreon. We do a bonus mm-hmm. episode every month. And a great idea that we did back in January, February, was all of these trades that didn't happen. And mm-hmm. half of the podcast was the Philadelphia Flyers, or sorry, the Montreal Canadiens trying to acquire Vinny Cavalier. The other half were the Philadelphia Flyers trying to acquire any top pairing defenseman. Literally so, any top pairing. And- <laughs> do you play defense? Has someone in the NHL ever referred to you as top pairing? We'd come like to down. give, yeah, come on in. So they have been looking for that guy, that, that player forever. And mm-hmm. I would argue, you know, despite a bit of a, a, a checkered injury history, what's he got shoulder surgery, but Ryan Ellis goes to Philadelphia and they finally have their, their top pairing guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> I love this move. I don't think Ryan Ellis is the type of player that, you know, he's 30 now. He has, I think what six years left on his deal or something like that. He's from Nashville, Arash. You have nothing to worry about. A a defenseman from Nashville. They age like one, uh, (laughs) unless you're PK. But well, PK wasn't from Nashville, so there you go. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I love. Okay, sick move. Like this is a move where I was like, oh well, if the you know if the cost was right, like Vancouver, this would have been like putting Ryan Ellis as like a, a replacement for. Like a Nate Schmidt thing, if that ends up happening. Anyway, um, 
Ryan Ellis comes. He's going to be paired with Ivan Provorov. That's a sick pairing. Love Ivan me some Provorov Ivan Provorov. Ryan Ellis. That's great. He's yeah. going to age fine. Uh, they move Philip Myers, Nolan Patrick. Um, they, you know, they free up a spot. They mm-hmm. protect Nicholas Obey Kubel instead of James Van Riemsdyk. The, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening with Philly. I mean, that the one big rumor or the one big thing from Frank Cervelli last night was um, that essentially Seattle is going to pick Vladimir Tarasenko and then move Tarasenko to Philly oh. for like a pick and, you know, Jacob Voracek to take the Jacob mm-hmm. Voracek contract or something like that. Um, That's spicy. It is. Mm-hmm. Now, with Philly, like they... I think last year it was this Carter Hart implosion right. um, and the, and the team just didn't play. I, I think they, when a team doesn't have goaltending, even if the team in front of you is amazing, it's really hard to play a full, like a full season with a goaltender you had don't have confidence in that, you know, mentally is just like shaky as hell. Yeah. So you, you overcompensate and you're not, playing the way that you feel that you want to play because you're like oh god if i take this chance then it's going to go back and guy can't even, stop a beach ball even if an average goalie is you know n- unremarkable like let's say matt murray if he's playing with confidence yeah. he's going chris, to be fine he's chris going Osgood. to make the save chris and- osgood chris, chris osgood chris, chris, yeah the the nine the nine <clears throat> ten save percentage man himself like that's <laughs> totally and that's fine listen that's fine like he's not gonna He's not going to give you a 940 Hoshek like thing, but you know, he's, he has the ability to make a save. He has the ability to make a stop. Yeah. Um, but Philly has a lot of stuff kind of cooking. That's such an interesting deal. Cause then um, we're, oh, I don't even know. It's yeah. Phil Myers and Nolan Patrick go over to Nashville. Then Nashville flips Nolan Patrick to Vegas for Cody glass. So, I mean, Hey, the best thing about news that comes from Vancouver is now it's very clear that we won that draft. <laughs> no, we did. And I'm, I will say it on the pod. I am a person <laughs> that when that draft happened and understand this was like mid 20, my mid twenties. So I wasn't <laughs> as um, learned and patient. I like was in my car, heard them draft Elias Patterson. And in my right. Slack channel, I was like, fucking fire jim benning he didn't take gabe velarde this fucking idiot i'm done <laughs> just goes to show you like who's what a, gabe I, velarde <laughs> what is a gabe Vel- um well yeah you look at that draft it's like we could have man, so easily been like damn it we drafted that could have been cody glass. no that could have been <laughs> cody glass that could have there there's talks all about how they had internal discussions over the, well, um it reminds you know, that that draft it was 27 2017 yeah and it uh-huh. reminded me of the year prior where it's like you could take your homegrown you know what you know what close to home you could take a Matthew you could chuck instead you go off the board with an only you levy they did the same thing where it's kind of like right cody glass but you should and oh, we should maybe you should have taken him instead of this off the board kid and right i mean now who's looking way hot Look how hot he is compared to Matt Kachuk, figuratively and literally. And Matt Kachuk plays for a team named after fire, and he pales <laughs> in comparison. I rest my case. 2017 draft won by the Canucks. Laying the hammer down. 